Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Catholic Talk Show. We got a fun episode today. We're going to be talking about Vatican conspiracy theories on the internet. That's right. We're going to look at five of the craziest conspiracy theories about the Vatican. Everything from ancient satanic books, aliens, and so much more. It's going to be really fun. I'm not saying that there's aliens in the Vatican, but there's definitely aliens in the Vatican. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, we've uh, got something for you today, for sure. That's right, my lizard people brothers. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah, conspiracies are always a blast. I, I still, whenever I hear the word conspiracy or, you know, watch any conspiracy stuff, which is like, you know, when I'm sick, it's my favorite thing to do. But, uh, but you know, I had a I had a roommate who, like, spoke in his sleep, like an Ave. Oh, no. <laughs> and he was he just got he just got out of the army and stuff. And he was, like, wrestling with something in his dream. And then he was like... It's all a conspiracy, man. And, and I just said, no, it's not. It's the truth. They started like, yelling and we were like arguing. <laughs> I was just messing with him. Oh, man. Shout out Neil Border. Yeah, there's some, there is a tendency of humans to try to make sense of a world that doesn't seem to make sense, that's seemingly mm -hmm. random, and try to make all these connections that just aren't there. And the result that yields that is some crazy, crazy conspiracy oh, yeah. theories. And uh, they can be a lot of fun to kind of explore and and number one i mean honestly just to get a nice laugh out of it because they're so absurd the majority of them but then also it kind of uh it helps you kind of understand the mindset and some of the um the way people think about the church uh <laughs> it's a pretty interesting insight into what's out there oh so for sure. and that. there is a lot out there i oh, mean sure. You know, there are entire shows based on on conspiracies. And, really? you know, whenever there's a mystery or, or some type of institution or structure in the world that, you know, is just so far out of reach. I mean, it's just naturally, generally speaking, across the board going to develop some conspiracies. So where are we going first? And what's this experience of uh, the first experience? Not where are we going, Marty? When are we going? <laughs> <laughs> So there is a conspiracy theory that in the 1940s, a Benedictine priest got together with a seemingly every most famous scientist of the 19th or of the 20th century, like Enrico Fermi and Werner von Braun, and came up with a device called the chronovisor. And what the chronovisor was was a device held secretly in the Vatican that could pick up residual energy from events throughout history and basically allow you to watch any event that ever happened on a TV screen. So let's take a look at this video here. Uh, I haven't watched it, but let's see what they're Sounds saying like about the this YouTubes. thing called the chronovisor. And one of the most intriguing objects hidden in the archive is called the chronovisor a device that can view events anywhere and any time in history. And for years, its existence was just a rumor. No proof of the chronovisor was ever found, but a book released by a Vatican priest would change all that. Let's find out why. <laughs> I like the tinfoil hat on the face. It sounds like a visor with corona on it. Uh -huh. Pellegrino Ernetti was a scientist, world-class authority on music, and a scholar. He spoke several languages, he dabbled in electronics, physics, so like and even old. the occult arts. <laughs> he also happened to be a Benedictine monk. Now, whether by luck or by fate, Father Pellegrino Ornetti found himself in the company of Francois Brun, a priest from France, and they were sharing a ferry ride down the Grand Canal in Venice. The water was calm and the trip was long, so the men struck up a conversation. And they shared a love of languages, science, and history. And they were discussing different interpretations of the Bible when Ernetti interrupted. There's nothing to interpret, Ernetti said. It's possible to see what actually happened, to see the truth with your own eyes. The broom thought Ernetti was joking or being rhetorical. He wasn't. Ernetti spoke of a device he had worked on hidden in the deepest, most secret levels of the Vatican archive, a device that allowed its operator to witness events anywhere and any time in the past and it was called the chronovisor. Do a time machine? Well, sort of. You can't travel anywhere with the chronovisor, <laughs> but you can program it to show you certain events on a screen, like a television. Yeah, boy, you can stream anything these days. Now, Francois Brun was stunned by the story. He knew Father Pellegrino Ernetti to be a serious man. Ernetti was well-read, well-educated, and well-respected in the church. He was not one for exaggeration. 
Yet Ernetti claimed to have heard speeches by Napoleon and Mussolini. He visited ancient Rome, and Ernetti was amazed that Cicero was as captivating a speaker as history claimed. My name is Maximus Desmus Meridius, commander of the armies of the North, general of the Felix Legions, and loyal servant to the true emperor, Marcus Aurelius. Father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered Dude, this wife, is weird. This is very and I strange. will have my vengeance. In this life, or the next. Are you not entertained? I'm not. Anyway, Broom wanted to know about the events in the Bible. Did they really happen? It's all true, Ernetti said. He had seen the final days of Jesus, including his crucifixion. He saw the creation of the Ten Commandments, the Last Supper, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, and everything in the Bible. Now, Broom was obviously skeptical. Even though Ernetti was intelligent and talented, he didn't have the skill and knowledge needed to build this kind of device. And Ernetti agreed that he couldn't build the chronovisor himself. He had help. <laughs> in 1952, Father Pellegrino Ornetti was working on a project at the Catholic University of Milan. And being an expert in early Christian music, he was studying and restoring tape recordings of Gregorian chants. And while listening to one of the tapes, the school's founder, Father Agostino Gemelli, was convinced he heard his father's voice, even though his father was dead at the time of the recording. But what Gemelli heard was not his dead father relaying some profound message to his son from beyond the grave. What he heard was more mundane. His father arguing with someone over the price of shoe wax. Gemelli's father was a cobbler what who made and sold here? shoes. And Gemelli thought he'd been given a gift from God. But Ernetti wondered if there was a scientific reason for this. That the sights and sounds of people in the past somehow continued to exist long after they happened. And if they did, could they be detected? It sounds like EVPs. Well, it does. And this technology is not that different from what we now call EVPs or electronic <laughs> voice phenomena. Anybody and since Gemelli was president of the Pontifical Academy of Ohio? Sciences, he was able to fund a project to explore the possibility of listening or seeing events from the past. Ernetti assembled a team of 12 scientists, but he would only reveal the names of two. And <laughs> one was Enrico Fermi, the Nobel Prize winning physicist known for Fermi's paradox and for creating the world's first nuclear reactor. The other scientist was Nazi rocket scientist turned director of NASA, Werner von Braun. What? Like sound waves can be pressed into vinyl to produce a recording, Ernetti said that his team had discovered that light and sound continue to exist as forms of energy. And using a series of antennas, the chronovisor could detect this residual electromagnetic radiation and translate it into image and sound. Operators of the chronovisor could designate a specific date wow. and location, then the scene was reconstructed on a large cathode ray tube. Now, Francois Brune was obviously amazed by the story and I've asked Ernetti what this. happened this to the device. Ernetti said that once the team realized what they had invented, they brought their discovery to the Pope. And since the chronovisor can tune into any place and time in the past, it could be used as a powerful weapon. It could reveal state secrets or be used for blackmail. So Pope Pius XII worried that, in the wrong hands, the chronovisor could launch a dictatorship unlike anything the world had ever seen. The Pope ordered the machine dismantled and forbid anyone from speaking of it. Ernetti said this was the first he's spoken of it in over 10 years. And Brune understood <laughs> and agreed that a machine like the chronovisor would be extremely dangerous, and it was probably best if it stayed hidden and dismantled. But Brune said to Ernetti, it's too bad there's no proof that the chronovisor actually worked. Ernetti said to Brune, my friend, I have proof. Oh, proof? Quintus Ennius was a writer and poet who lived during the Roman Republic. All right, now this is getting, this is getting a little detailed, but... Yeah. So what do you guys think? Do you think the Vatican's hiding a secret machine developed by Nazi scientists and the inventor of the nuclear reactor that allows us to see back in time? Because the fish think so. I I, think the fish so. think so. I'm going to stick with the fish on this, too. Yeah. You think so? Aluminum hat. He's got special energy that he's drawing in with it's the aluminum. It's electromagnetic. It's electromagnetic. Yeah. And EDPs. EDPs. Really EDPs. Yeah. EDPs. Electro this, voice phenomenon. This is yeah. this is pretty uh, this is pretty strange. That's pretty it's weird how like matter of fact he's talking too. Yeah. yeah. How many people watch this kind of stuff? Uh, really this bizarre. video has got almost Whoa. a half a million views. So this is from a channel called The Y Files. Uh, pretty good production value. So very good. Pro yeah, yeah, actually very good. Production uh, I know. Value. But um, this whole thing was actually 
exposed. Like the, this priest uh, in the 70s released a video, or he said an image taken from Jesus um, using the chronovisor uh, of the crucifixion, right? And uh, he released it as proof, right? And he said this image here on the left that you're seeing on your screen uh, was an actual chronovisor generated image of Jesus at the crucifixion. Well, just like anybody does, people went and debunked it, and they said, no, dude, this is just, <laughs> this is a and reverse. And doesn't look tortured. There's no blood on him. At all. And what they found was that it was a reverse image of a cross from a church in Umbria. Hmm. So, like, they, like, I mean, this whole thing is totally debunked. Um, the guy even said, some people claimed that he admitted on his deathbed that the whole thing was a hoax, but right. they're saying, well, in the 1950s, they were able to use antennas. Dude, I have a latest phone with a billion dollar satellite floating around in space and I can't download, I don't know, the news in my neighborhood sometimes. There's no way that you're using some antenna from 1950 tied to the RCA TV and able to pick up electromagnetic impulses from 2,000 years ago with such precision <laughs> that you can hear a speech by Cicero <coughs> or, you know. Maybe that's why they dismantled it. They just didn't want this getting into people's hands. That's possible. But is there hidden technology from the past that is out of reach from modern man? Is there? Mm. I don't know, man. What are you hiding from us, Rich? You'll never know. <laughs> what if we take you on a, a gondola ride? You're not, you're, not on the, you're not on the level of the secret archives. Dude, they blame everything on the secret archives. Everything's how on the secret not, archives. How can you not have a conspiracy around something called the secret archives? Yeah. yeah I don't know. So what do you guys think on the... Uh, that, what do you rate? Is, yes, true or debunked? I mean, really, we're gonna give it. I can't even like, really entertain it. In all honesty, terrible. it was it was not a good conspiracy, at least for me. No, yeah. no. I like good conspiracies. Good yeah, conspiracies. I typically I typically stay in the realm of like Egypt and aliens. You know. Uh, okay. Well, that's where I normally. I've got a thing for you. You yeah. want to talk about aliens? I got aliens. You got aliens. I got aliens all well, day I long. You, I hope you pull something. Did they make the uh, pyramids? Well, we're not. Going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Catholic conspiracies in the Vatican. Okay. <laughs> so this one, I think, look, we're talking aliens. We're talking Fatima. And secret archives. And secret archives. I mean, it is like the it's trifecta, dude. This is what <laughs> Father Rich needs to be entertained. The, this third secret of Fatima, the, the secret archives and ancient aliens. Dude, this is like... Explosive. I mean, this is like the perfect cocktail, <laughs> right? I, I'm going to drink this one all day. All right. So let's take a listen to what this guy's saying. The kids were given three messages, and the Pope refused to release the third message. The third message apparently talks <laughs> this dude. about extraterrestrial life. Now, that is sensational because to me, to deny the revelation of that particular message. And that is exactly Papa what Buono. the Pope did. <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder why. Some contend that the miracle of Fatima is one of many events that describe visitations from extraterrestrial messengers. <sighs> Researchers also point to the voices Jonah. described by Joan of Arc, visions received in Lourdes by Bernadette Subaros, Super and gross. countless stories depicted in the Hebrew Bible, Can't in which similar events are described. Perhaps the Vatican knows far more about life in the universe than they have acknowledged. Wow. Wow, man. So it was still the message of Fatima, and they're saying the third message, which was not shared. Is Dude, that, the Vatican is can barely it? figure out how to get announcements into the bulletin, let alone how to hide <laughs> secrets of aliens. <laughs> They can't update their website. They're not hiding alien technology because if they were, they'd have a better website. Let's just be honest. Maybe that's just a front. Uh, maybe it's a, a feigned deficiency. It could be a conspiracy. Mm. Yeah. Maybe they, maybe they, you know, know that Ryan Shields checking every day their website and just disappointed <laughs> <laughs> to hide the aliens. Maybe. In maybe the, the aliens archives. are in the archives on the servers, and then they can bring them out. Maybe the Vatican's website is so advanced that it looks deficient, but is actually super coded. So if you look at the code, years old, right? 
Yeah. Oh, it's the first website ever. It might, it might have happened in the third century. Well, if I had a chronovisor, I'd go back and look and see if they're making, you know, if Pope Damasus was making a website. <laughs> I'll bring the fish. <laughs> the fish. Oh, man. But, yeah, no. Well, look, the Pope refused to release the third secret of Fatima because it's obviously it's aliens. Obviously, because of Joan of Arc. Because of Joan of Arc, right? <laughs> it's a terrible argument. <laughs> it's a good argument. <laughs> Oh, I man. just love how they take the Pope face and it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was good. my favorite part. So too. good. So good. Kyle, it's on we, the History Channel, by the way. Folks. Kyle, can we get a full screen Pope St. John the 23rd? Da -da. Da -da. Ready and go. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Kyle. Um, I love this dude and this channel, Ancient Aliens. Dude, like, oh, there's just so nothing they can't man. blame on aliens. Oh, I just love it. Really? Is and that how they do everything. it? Oh, everything. Everything is aliens. And, and it's the way they say it. Extraterrestrial. Extraterrestrial life. It's explosive. <laughs> this is explosive. <laughs> there's I the feel explosive bad for truth. people that watch this stuff. <clears throat> Rich. Hey, dude, uh, I, love, I, I really enjoy it. It's entertaining. Do you believe it's it? It's entertaining. Do you believe? Do you believe? Right? Richard, do you believe? <laughs> Wow. Do you want to believe? Do I want to believe in this conspiracy? Yes. No. No, this one's All stupid. the other ones he's good with. I'm good with other But we're not talking about those. All right. Give me something believable. Believable? Okay. Mm. We're going back to the Vatican secret archives. I think there's a theme here. Everyone seems to oh, think yeah, everything is in the Vatican secret archives. So, guys, have you ever heard of the Dragon Rouge, the Red Dragon, Ooh. the Grand Grimoire? Mm. No, it sounds exciting. <laughs> it sounds exciting. Tell me more. Please tell me more. I'm curious because it's conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. So this is Mystical Objects That the Vatican Might Be Hiding by Side Projects, which is a pretty good channel. He does a lot of, this dude does a lot of good history videos. Mm -hmm. and um, So let's see what he has to say about mystical objects that the Vatican might, might be hiding. It's okay. The Ark of the Covenant. For those unfamiliar with the term, grimoires are books containing magic spells and invocations. So, in layman's terms, the Grand Grimoire is the granddaddy of them all. Shrouded in myth and lore, the Grand Grimoire, also commonly referred to as Le Dragon Rouge or The Red Dragon, is a black magic tome that may date back to the early 15th century, though it could have been written in the early 1800s and passed off as a much older work. Okay, Whatever the case, it's also was probably a shadowy figure <laughs> named Antonio Ven. Natiana del Rabina, of whom very little, as in next to nothing, is known. Then again, other sources claim that it was written by the mythical figure Honorius of Thebes, who, to confuse things even further, so may or may not like have existed. Throw any Though name out Honorius's there, no existence is debatable like, if he was a real was person by, and know, an occult author, some say that he was Sigartha possessed by of, the devil when you know, he wrote it. Nobody wrote knows anything seems, about uh, this guy. Seems yeah, unlikely. Yeah, really if so, it like would go a long way to explaining its grim contents. Regardless of the author's identity, whoever wrote the book probably based much of it on the right writings of King Solomon, which were surprisingly macabre and otherworldly in their own right. Divided into multiple sections, the grimoire includes a detailed organizational chart which lays out exactly who wields power in hell, starting with Emperor Lucifer and Prince Beelzebub in the top two spots respectively, and going all the way down to the That's lowliest demons and warlocks. Right Other positions that we're more familiar with in Western governments today include a Prime Minister, a Commander-in-Chief, and an Inspector General. But though interesting, it's the more practical content that makes it so popular with those intent on crossing over to the dark side either temporarily or permanently. Specifically, it includes instructions and spells for summoning Satan, speaking with the dead, winning the lottery, making an amorous interest fall in love with you, and making yourself invisible. All of which sound like entirely real things. There's even a handy recipe for homemade glue which is perfect for cost-conscious families with creative little ones stuck inside on a rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> Much earlier, grimoire copies have purportedly passed through the hands of a few of history's most notorious occultists like Alistair Crowley, but these days reprints can be purchased at bookstores and are available online from places like Amazon. Though there's no evidence that the original grimoire is secreted away in a Vatican vault, in recent years it has enjoyed a resurgence in popular literature, video games, movies, and television shows like Fox's Sleepy Hollow. So the question is, does the Catholic Church actually have a centuries-old copy of the Grand Grimoire, or perhaps even the original tucked away somewhere? Who knows? But though it's little more than an urban legend and pop culture That's curiosity in most countries, it's still frequently used in Haiti and footage. other former French colonies in the New 
world where voodoo and black magic are practiced. On another note, the Grand Grimoire is said to be impervious to fire, which, scientifically speaking, is partially true of all books, since the lack of air between the pages often allows them to survive infernos when everything around them is burned to a crisp. But this is something we could easily disprove by buying a copy of it off Amazon and setting fire to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, his personality yeah. by far was he was the best yeah. presenter. Yeah, out this of all dude's them. got a lot of good stuff on yeah, his. He's show. excellent. Yeah. I like him. I so, love the people that he cites. It's like yeah. this guy. Uh, nobody ever knows of his yeah. existence or whatever. Game room. Brian, like, name yeah. me name me your most Italian sounding relative. Oh man. <laughs> Gosh, there's a lot. Yeah. Uh, probably the Labrucianos, <laughs> Antonin Labruciano. <laughs> Going back to the 12th century in the works of Antonin Labruciano, <laughs> you can find evidence of the Grand Grimoire in the Vatican Conspiracy Theory Library. Yeah, I mean, you can just throw anything out there. And if it's on YouTube, it's like, and you say it with a British accent. That, uh, that allows for a lot of yeah. room there for right. somebody to dive into. Yeah. Um, is there the Grand Grimoire, or a secret text that contains all the knowledge of black arts in the Vatican. Out of all of them, I'm going to say this is probably the most likely one. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I, I, I tell you what, man, winning the lottery, like if it's a centuries old, do they have lotteries like 600 <laughs> do they years have centuries? ago? I mean, like, let's talk They've about that. They've been having 50-50 in bingo <laughs> since the beginning of no time. No way. Yeah, yeah. Out of here. Dude, the church at Capernaum, man. Bingo night was rocking. <laughs> um, There's a bunch of fights afterwards. <laughs> like, you know, here's a, a lot of these books that you'll see, you know, kind of like, I don't know, Guides to the Dark Art and the Malleus Maleficarum. And, uh, these all happen in the 18th and 19th century. And there's kind of the after the Age of Enlightenment, there was kind of. You know, everyone in polite society was very much a man of science, but they'd get together and they'd have their bourbons and their absinthe and their parlors, and they'd be like, but really, I have the grand grimoire. And they were mostly like, like, like tricks. They were like just dumb talking points. And then they kind of get mythologized, and then 200 years later, people are like, the Vatican's hiding this, dude. They don't want you to know how to win the lottery because everyone would just win the lottery and turn invisible. But Don't you take away my conspiracy. You want to win the lottery? Yeah. With a grand war. Grand war. <laughs> Why not just buy somebody it? nobody's even known of his existence? By <laughs> selling Book of the Pepper Shagats de la Croce? Uh, yeah, <laughs> Book of the Pepper. <laughs> All right, that was a pretty whack conspiracy theory, but I think if anything is... Redeemable? Redeemable. There not might, with the lottery. I can imagine... I mean, the Vatican has letters from Genghis Khan. <gasps> God bless you. you. They have letters mm. from... Constantine and, and thousand oh there's all sorts of stuff documents. in there yeah for sure how do you know oh I how know. do you know well, listen if when they become a priest they give you the... one hour to spend in the Vatican archives it's like dude <clears throat> here's your collar here's your chalice here's your pass for one hour in the Vatican library you go spend it all at once <clears throat> you have reached the Dewey Decimal System of the <laughs> Vatican archives uh, what are you looking up there well I don't know if you know this but the Cardinal Prefect over the Vatican ar archives, you know what his last name is? What's that? Pagano. Ooh. Ooh wait a second. The that's a spear. That's a spiracy theory right All there. All right there. Bishop Sergio Pagano. Oh, his name's Sergio. 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 I am Sergio Pagano. <laughs> I have books. You look at them. You don't look at them. I'm Sergio Pagano. I tell you when you look at book. Here, take a book. Close the book. Richard. Grand nephew, come in and look at the book. Do not look at the book. It is a secret. Shut the Dewey Decimal System book. <laughs> I am Sergio. They changed, they changed the name from the Vatican Secret Archives to the Apostolic Archives. Oh. I don't know uh, if you know that. Was that Sergio's call? I think that's Papa Francesco. Oh, yeah? I think it might have to do a conspiracy. Yeah. It might be a conspiracy. <laughs> like, guys, I think we're drawing too much heat going with <laughs> the Secret Archives. How about we call it the... Totally open and transparent archives. No one will ever be on to us. <laughs> Gosh, you're such a wordsmith. <laughs> and Uncle Sergio, I'm not going to tell him anything about what's in the Vatican archives. Because <laughs> you don't know. And right, <laughs> right now we have one viewer It says... So you think. I'm looking at our analytics. It says we have one viewer from the Vatican. And I can just imagine Uncle Sergio in his office going... That's right, Richard. You've done good, my boy. <laughs> done and he gives good. you that Italian cheek slap where he's like, you've done good. <clears throat> good way to talk. I love it. Well, look, if you do have connections, get me in there. I'd like to go in there. No. 
Okay. Fine. You guys have made fun of my conspiracy <laughs> theories and all that. All right. Let's see. What do we got here? Okay. Now this one. This was on Joe Rogan, right? Oh yeah. Look at like okay. Look, Brady. Right, already we got this uh, pause screen. We're about to play. This dude's got veins popping in his neck. He's <laughs> he's feeling it. Okay. So this was on Rogan. So Eddie Bravo exposes Luciferian elements at the Vatican, and this has got f almost five million views. Yeah, so, this is Paul the Sixth Hall. I've seen this. Let's before. take a look here. That's, that's in the Vatican. That's a, the Serpent yeah, Cathedral. That's dope. Come on, man. Yeah, that's, that's a serpent. Dope. Should look do at a the show fangs. there, Jim. Look at the fangs and look at the eyes. That look is a tongue. serpent. Come on. Look at the tongue that comes the out Vatican of the The Vatican's been that's pretending amazing. they're into Christ. They're not into Christ. They want to destroy oh, Christ. Okay. Oh, wait. That's supposed to be a snake? They're trying to destroy Christ. Oh, yeah. I see. Wild. Now You don't snake. see this? Look at that. Look I at the see fangs. It. Give it up, That's bro. the Vatican. That's the inside of a How is that Jesus? How is that Jesus right there? Where is Jesus? Is that the Vatican? That is the Vatican. That is a snake. You know what's the most amazing thing about the Vatican, though? It's not the Satan. Satanic shit. St. Peter's Basilica. St. Peter's Basilica oh, took incredible. hundreds of years. And when you're standing in the middle of it, you, you can't believe it's real, man. It's incredible. I mean, like, go to that upper left corner that you got there, right there, Jamie, right there. Yeah. That it, you when you when you zoom in on yeah. that, can't click on it? That's Doesn't click? Honest. It's so That's amazing. It. What is that? That's St. Peter's Basilica. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, this I, is a... I hate this one. Oh, yeah. And there, the, Joe Rogan's got the biggest podcast in the world, even bigger than Father Mycicle Schmitz, okay? Mm -hmm. And they're on here saying, as a matter of fact, the Vatican is shaped destroying like, Christ. Destroying Christ and shaped like a snake. This is so stupid. It is. This it's is, been told. So, do you know what you know what room that is, right? Paul the Sixth Hall. You've been there, right? Yeah. You I, were just recently. I've been there. I too. was just there. I, I just had my meetings. Uh, my friends got their uh, marriage blessed Guys, while I was there. It does was it awesome. look like a snake when you're in there? No. Uh. -uh. Okay. Not at all. So this was really stupid. So what happened was, have you you guys have heard of a fisheye lens, right? Yeah, it allows yeah. you to yeah. take a wide lens. screen view of something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That hall is not at all shaped like that. And Kyle, put this picture up on the screen. The, the the shape of it's more like a, like almost like a football field with like a right. dome. It looks like the and the way the architects draw in natural light. It's, it's modern architecture, yeah. and and the way that they're refracting the light off of all these different surfaces and drawing it in. It's really the effect of lighting, and mm -hmm. then the stained glass windows yeah, on the but, side. But the, the way that they use this fish eyes lens, oh, they yeah. make it look like these two windows that are on opposite mm -hmm. sides of the building are right next to each other like eyes, mm -hmm. and the aisle. They even have it curved to make it look like a snake. Dude, this is just a fish eye lens distortion mm -hmm. picture. And this happened a couple of years ago, and everyone's like, dude, whoa. Yeah, and then and even uh, hit that left one right there. Yeah, that, look at that. That gives you the outside the perspective of, of the shape. Yeah, you yeah. perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you can see. So there's the there's the window right there. Yeah, not up here like they are on the eyes of the snake. They're on the side. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So I, this one is just I. This one's lazy. No, it's it's it's, yeah, it's not it's, it's not just lazy. It's like e even if and that, it's not intelligent. Like well, it's, it's not, not intelligent, intelligent at all. Yeah. yeah. Like it's just. I mean, yeah. Is are there. Is the devil trying to attack the church? Does he have agents in the Vatican? I'm sure he's got them everywhere, right? Does but he have them in this room? Does that mean Howard? Yeah, Howard. <laughs> he's like, huh? What? <laughs> yeah, but it's just like the architecture of this building distorted means that the Vatican is destroying Jesus. Could you imagine like, what it would look like if we took a fisheye lens of Howard? <laughs> Could oh you imagine gosh. what they're like, oh my gosh, there's aliens. Kyle, post that, <laughs> post that picture. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this one is, re I, I, Someone, I think even the Vatican released this, you know, just to show, to show all of the architecture in one picture. And they're like, oh, yeah. this is a snake and this secretly Luciferian. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, man. I think no, that, yeah, it, it turns my that's stomach. That's as dumb as the first you know, one. But it's just. Yeah, yeah but here's it, it's on Joe Rogan, the most popular podcast in the world. This has got 5 million views. And that episode's probably got 25 million views. And everyone's just like, yeah, dude. And then that's, I think, one of the things that you can see of how these things can go really sideways quick, that people just accept them as fact. Well, and, and, and it's just said with so much emotion, and it's an appeal to yeah. emotion. And, and so much yeah. certainty. Oh, yeah, exactly. And, and it's with certainty. Yeah. Yeah. And when you when you have prestige or, or a certain level and caliber of popularity, you know, you drive influence at such a high level. And, and that can sway somebody's, you know, like 
doubt. Like I'm, I'm going to pull back and we say, yeah. well, you know, is there something there that goes, you know, that looks like a snake and that's all that people need. Right. They just need a headliner or like a picture or a and, fish and eye lens or a distorted All they image. had to do is scroll a couple images down yeah. and they would have seen that this isn't even like an well, accurate you know, like picture. It, it clearly like Joe shifted completely. Yeah, I, I, you could tell he wasn't buying it and he was well, like. it was just not a great, like Joe's a super intelligent guy and those are his boys and stuff like yeah. that. And like, you know. Yeah. And and Joe's used to having high level conversations, but he could also hang with the bros. You know, yeah. like he he's he's very talented guy, but um, clearly like he was like I wasn't feeling that, and he shifted to you know yeah. St. Peter's and yeah. how like unbelievable. Yeah. So I heard, I heard a great description of Joe Rogan, and it's like it's finally your 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 older brother's stoner friends allowing you to hang out with him. <laughs> 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 oh, it's pretty good, but. I, I enjoy listening to Rogan sometimes. I mean, you know, just like anyone, they've sometimes good, sometimes not. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I don't think. But he he's really master. He's mastered the platform. Yeah. I mean, just like a side of like content wise, which yeah. some content is. Well, he was one of the first players in, in the podcast yeah, game. Just I mean, so like, I mean, yeah. whatever. But yeah, this particular one really irks me because it's so stupid and so easily debunked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So last conspiracy theory here, and I know that both of you guys have been here as well. So. Yep. Underneath this one has this same video has been uploaded probably 30 times on YouTube and all it's probably got 30 40 million views mm. And it says the title this is from the channel reptilian resistance <laughs> Reptilian resistance. Wow underneath the Vatican is Lucifer Medusa Isis pagan gods and idols HD. Oh My god. All right, let's see. That's how these... just a horrible Millions of views on this though, dude Medusa we're talking about mythological creatures. We find out why they keep all these idols down there in these images. As we move to room U, <laughs> here we find the shock of all shocks. I love the music. Here on the wall, it says there is a depiction <laughs> of Lucifer. That is the light bearer, the morning star. On the opposite of the wall, there is a drawing of Vesper, the evening star, cosmic symbol of the human life cycle. We find out that when we get to room U, here we have a clear depiction of Lucifer underneath the Vatican at St. Peter's Basilica. We ask ourselves, why are they keeping this image of Lucifer underneath the Vatican? Again, you would think if you're a Christian church, you would not want to have any of these images now, we know that they'll go on and say, oh, well, we're saving it because it's a UNESCO heritage site or something like that. <laughs> oh, my god! This is always their excuse. <laughs> <laughs> For the true Christian, this is not an excuse because we know if you're giving glory and propaganda to false deities and false pagan gods, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? That was a great way to end. Dude, that guy is seriously hilarious. The slasher, 80s slasher movie music. What a terrible production. I know what you're going for. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, this this is, I don't know. It's like a UNESCO, UNESCO, UNESCO heritage center. Heritage what, heritage what are you doing? <laughs> always say that. Uh, always say that. Always say that. <laughs> so here's, here's the interesting thing. <laughs> This one is actually true. You know, you guys have both been on no, the Scabby the image, tour. The image, yeah. Now, you guys have both been on the Scabby tour. Right? I have. Okay. So, for a little context, St. Peter's Basilica, the Vatican, yeah. is built on the site of the grave of St. Peter, who was executed by Nero's circus yep. on the Vatican Hill. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, in ancient Roman times, cemeteries were not like we have them now, they were like little. You know, stone shacks, mausoleums along uh -huh. the side of the road so that people walking by can pour a little bit out for the homie, right? Uh -huh. um, literally. Yeah, literally. So the street that this... They went, had ports that went into the ground in yeah, the burial sites. That, that they really do, libation offerings, mm -hmm. whatever. But this, you can see even in this image, you know, where he's having all these things, this was a road. Mm -hmm. And there was just a bunch of this. Basically, this was a cemetery. The Vatican was built on a cemetery because St. Peter was buried in a cemetery, the closest one available to the place where he was executed. Now, you would imagine that a Roman... Which was a circus. Right. Now, you're going to imagine that a Roman cemetery from the first century, these people who died are going to have images of the gods they believed in, Roman gods. 
we're like, so Medusa and Isis and pagan gods. Yeah, it's a bunch of Roman graves. There's going to be those images in there. I mean, if you went to, if St. Peter happened to have been executed in Norway and they buried him, well, all the graves around him would be, you know, Thor and, you mm -hmm. know, whomever, you know. So, or Odin, whatever. So, and, but here's what's kind of a misleading thing about this. They're like a depiction of Lucifer. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is not what that means. It's not Lucifer in the satanic sense. I, I, I don't love, I hate, I'll say it, how people in the 20th century and 21st century will use English and assume that English even existed as a language at the time that this stuff happened, right? They're like, sunrise? What? Are you trying to tell me that the sunrise doesn't try to show that it's actually the sun rising from the grave? I'm like, dude, English didn't exist as a language for another 500 years. But, uh, you know, this is not a depiction of Lucifer the demon. This is a picture more... So the Romans would have called this phosphorus, the morning star, right? Venus, the planet Venus. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is Vesper, the evening star, right? That's where we get the word Vesper from. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this was just some random dude, Roman dude's grave who was showing the life cycle, the morning star yeah. and the evening star. But phosphorus is the name of that, that Roman god, not Lucifer. So, but Venus some some places will call the light bringer because it comes up in the morning. It's the morning star, so it comes and brings the morning. It has no connotation with Satan whatsoever. Wow. So this video is super easily debunked. And look, we're just preserving it because it's a UNESCO heritage site anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> what are you hiding? And that's what the Vatican always does. I mean, that's it's what just, we do. That's what we do. Right? UNESCO. We got to keep that heritage uh, classification going. <laughs> but you guys, you guys have both been on that tour, right? I yeah. mean. Oh, it's fascinating. And it really is. It's just and an ancient you, Roman road. Yeah, and when you when you see all the Christian graffiti and like just building up to, you know, the the beautiful Clementine Chapel mm -hmm. that is right next to the mm -hmm. remains of St. Peter. I mean, you feel it. I mean, it's just a very, very powerful. But what this place video of didn't mention is that the graffiti there is supplanting all this Roman stuff and it says Peter is here mm -hmm. in Greek. Peter mm -hmm. is here, or maybe mm -hmm. it was Latin, but there's an etching. Yeah, Peter but there's all here. sorts of imagery, you know, and all sorts of pagan imagery, yeah. you know, in different parts of it. And and uh, and then you start getting into the Christian imagery and the symbols, and you could see that, like, many people were being buried close to St. Peter for a, a while, yeah. you know, before... Uh, before all that, so th this is a uh, this is pretty cool. Since since we've been talking about, um, you know, the Vatican secret arf the cousin archives. Sergio sent you a message. Yeah, he did. He was like, "Hey, he's like, sure shut these him. guys up and come on, read this. Yeah, you know, read the I, company line. I um, hear you through my coronavirus <laughs> <laughs> on the feast. My the alien friend, he's watching the coronavirus. He's, he's watching this episode in the future." And you need to stop. You need to stop right now. We have a UNESCO heritage site. Otherwise, Pope John the Twenty Third. <laughs> otherwise, John the Twenty Third is going to come and bring down the hammer <laughs> from that has been miraculously and maliciously brought from the Grand Grimoire. Lord have mercy. Well, let's just uh, you know. So let's talk about a press release here. October twenty second. Is this really about happened. Go? John Paul II okay. on his feast day, but the Holy Father Pope Francis in 2019 changed the centuries-old title Archive Ar Archivum Secretum Vaticanum, the Vatican Secret Archives, to the Vatican Apostolic Archives. And as you read through this from the 1600s to the 1800s, you know, the, the sense of secreto can be misinterpreted. And what this is essentially is subject to the exclusive governance of the Pope, this is his archives for his own pleasure yeah. to be able to lead and govern the church accordingly to history. Here's the thing that's interesting. So secret archives, secreto, secretary mm -hmm. has the same sense, right? It's the personal archives. Mm -hmm. So the same place you get secretary and like organizing all your wow, papers. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's where it comes from. Mm -hmm. So it's not a secret not archive. Not a secret anymore. You, any, the secret's any, out. Any properly qualified and credentialed <laughs> Um, historian can go and read any book in there. There's but the modern mentality behind, yeah, conspiracy. Theory. Yeah, it's just it, it's it just begs for it. Yeah. I mean, and that's why Pope Francis made this move. Yeah, it's a pastoral apostolic move. 
Or an alien move. One or a never, reptilian lizard person one will move. Never tell. See. <laughs> secretary, secretary. <laughs> so do you know what's not a conspiracy theory? Um, our patrons love for this show. That's true. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's a fact. It is a fact. Right. That so if they if they go to CatholicTalkShow.com forward slash Patreon. Now, don't tell your friends about this. Don't tell anyone about this. Shh. If you go there and you become a patron and there's a lot of tiers to choose from, we're going to send you secret items from the Catholic Talk Show archive. <laughs> Things like hoodies that we brought from the future that are made of the most comfortable material in the world. From the coronavisor. From the coronavisor. <laughs> we're going to send you a coffee cup. Made by Enrico Fermi that is going to make your coffee <laughs> deliciously perfect. And do you know Enrico Fermi? Not many people know of no. him because he never existed, but it's really good that he made this. <laughs> We're going to send you other things like rosaries and stickers, all things that are only available from the Catholic Talk Show Secret Vatican Archives. Mm -hmm. So go to catholictalkshowcom forward slash Patreon and, you know, join, join our tribe of... Catholic reptilian people because mm. we couldn't do this without you because we have not found the spell to win the lottery so we have to rely on your support <laughs> until we get our hands on the book from the you know, Sergio and win the lottery and then and can... then our production quality will get up to the history channel right. yes <laughs> awesome but you know what else is not a conspiracy as well what's that that the number one Catholic prayer app in the world is hollow yeah that's true that's a fact as well so yeah. Catholic so hollow is a really amazing prayer app. It has hundreds and thousands of different ways that you can engage in prayer. It has guided prayer meditations, sleep meditations. It has all the prayer petitions of the Catholic Church's great um, patrimony put into one modern app, and that's why it's become the number one Catholic prayer app in the world. Over a billion prayers have been prayed for it and through it. So if you go to catholictalkshow.com forward slash hollow, you can try the app out for free. And another thing is, look, we know that you can't enter into our tribe of reptilian lizard people, but you do need fraternity. And the number one app for that for Catholic men is Exodus. Exodus is an app that relies on asceticism, fraternity, and prayer to make men the men that God wanted them to be. Over 20,000 men use Exodus. Uh, they have all kinds of features. It's not just a 90-day program. They have daily programs. They have 90-day programs. They have things that help you prepare for Lent, Advent, um, different traditions like the the St. Michael's fast, and a lot of different ways to really re-energize your manhood towards God to make you the man that the society needs, your family needs, and God wants you to be. So go to cathatasha.com forward slash exodus to try that app out for free. Awesome. All right. We well, we too. yeah, we, we appreciate the support and the energy that uh, you give us in supporting the show. Make sure you're hit, clicking the subscribe button on all of our platforms, sharing the good news of the show, and continue to connect with us each and every week right here at the Catholic Talk Show.